Hello and welcome to The Voice, a DBS Wealth Management Insights podcast. Each week we handpick a hot topic in the financial markets and get to the heart of it. This week in our inaugural episode, the hot topic in focus is S-REITs. We're going to discuss the impact of the Monetary Authority of Singapore's latest measures on S-REITs in response to the COVID-19 outbreak. So let's get started. Last week, the MES issued a press release in a bid to help SREITs navigate challenges faced in the current climate. The first big announcement they made was that the Ministry of Finance and Indian Revenue of Singapore will extend the timeline for SREITs to distribute at least 90% of their taxable income from 3 months to 12 months from the end of this financial year to qualify for tax transparency. At DBS, we certainly think this is a welcome relief for landlords given the revenue and cash flow mismatch in the near term. This is especially so for retail and hospitality REITs as they battle the challenging operating environment caused by the pandemic and balance their own cash flow requirements amid the new relief measures. With this timeline extension, S-REITs can now conserve some cash to better support their tenants and meet other cash payments such as operating expenses and interest payments, especially during the circuit breaker. Dividend payments can subsequently be made when the situation improves. The 12-month extension will also help S-REITs in the event the pandemic lasts longer than expected or business recovery takes longer than expected. But if you are a unit holder, this news of your near-term returns deferring may understandably not be the best of news. However, we posit that it is the lesser of two evils. The timeline extension to meet tax transparency requirements will give SREITs more flexibility and less agency to raise funds in a less conducive equity and or debt market environment. We believe this is likely to be a one-off occurrence given the extraordinary circumstances. And even though this may come at the expense of SREIT unit holders experiencing lower or delayed dividend payouts in the near term, this is indeed the lesser of two evils if the alternative is a risk of deterioration in balance sheets and cash flows of SREITs and result in the need to raise funds in the current distressed market. The second big announcement that came from the MES press release was the raising of the leverage limit of SREITs by 5%, taking it from 45% to 50%. This will give SREITs greater flexibility to manage their capital structure amid the challenging environment created by the COVID-19 pandemic. Given near-term pressures on cash flows, MES will also delay implementing the requirement of maintaining an interest coverage ratio of 2.5 times before being allowed to go beyond the prevailing 45% limit. At DBS, we believe this will give SREITs more firepower to debt fund acquisitions and better compete in the international arena for acquisitions and M&A opportunities. But we think the focus is not on acquisitions for now. There is minimal appetite from investors and banks to support such acquisition activities in this current climate as the immediate focus is to safeguard portfolio returns in the face of COVID-19 challenges. Nonetheless, a larger allowable headroom acts alongside a more lenient interest coverage ratio to allow SREITs more borrowing capacity to tie through a potential cash flow crisis in the short-term period. But with greater power comes great responsibilities. While it is still early to gauge how SREIT managers will utilize this increased gearing headroom, We believe that the REITs will be disciplined in their approach in borrowing while prioritizing cash conservation in current times. Upcoming acquisitions utilizing the increased debt headroom may not be totally out of the question given depressed asset valuations globally should this be within the REIT manager's risk appetite. We believe that most managers will remain prudent in their capital management approach, though we are likely to see average gearing of around 35%, currently heading towards the 38 to 40 percent level over time and investors will accord as REITs that remain prudent and consistent in their capital management approach with better cost of equity among others.
One may argue that higher gearing may inflate cost of equity capital, as most of the large market cap REITs are still trading at levels where they can easily access equity capital. However, we believe the tighter interest coverage ratio does provide a safeguard against callous overleveraging and will benefit unit holders. We found that an interest coverage ratio of 2.5 times is usually higher than typical bank covenants of 1.5 to 2.0 times, but this includes perpetual coupons or interest within the calculation. Thus, this eliminates the risk of S REITs double dipping into the higher gearing headroom as perpetual securities are counted as equity rather than debt as per accounting guidelines. That said, almost all the S REITs have current interest coverage ratios that are safely above the 2.5 times floor. We believe that a higher floor will be more appropriate to guard against over leveraging, and the low interest environment may not be representative of a normalized interest coverage ratio if interest rates normalize in the longer term. And the good news is, based on our estimates, S REITs will be more than able to meet. The 2.5 times interest coverage ratio requirement, despite our cut in earnings for the retail and hospitality sectors, we noted that only two REITs may have to keep within the 45%, rather than a revised 50% limit. SunTech REIT and Maple Tree North Asia Commercial Trust (MNACT), which recently reported interest coverage ratios of 2.9 times and 2.5 times. And from our calculations, only six REITs have increased obligations due to perpetuals and bonds. Ascenders REIT, Fraser's Hospitality Trust, Escort Residence Trust, ESR REIT, Maple Tree Logistics Trust, and Soil Build Business Space REIT. Including the more conservative adjustments, all S REITs except for Suntech REIT and Maple Tree North Asia Commercial Trust would still be more than able to meet the new 2.5 times interest coverage ratio requirement. But above all, industrial S REITs ratios remain the strongest. We note that the industrial S REITs interest coverage ratios remain the strongest among the S REITs. Once again, reiterating our view that the sector is projected to deliver relatively more stable returns compared to peers. The strong interest coverage ratios also support potential acquisition activities, which at current valuations are accretive for most. And that's what we have for today's episode on S REITs. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Voice, a DBS Wealth Management Insights podcast. We hope these episodes provide deeper insight as to what's going on in the financial markets and what you should do to maximize your portfolio. For more insights into how we can help you pursue your financial goals, do contact your relationship manager or visit DBS Research linked in your email. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll catch you again on another episode of The Voice.